You know, let, let me tell you something. I don't know if you're aware of this or if you track it on a calendar, but I do. This this Wednesday, in fact, today, if today's when today's Wednesday, today, August 20th, Dunkin' Donuts brings back the pumpkin donut. And you know how I feel about that. That's, I mean, that's a donut where regardless of if you're watching your health or not, I mean, you buy a dozen just for yourself and you eat them in your car in the parking lot outside of that, of that thing. I mean, they're, they're special. And, and what really pisses me off is it's a fall, it's a seasonal thing. It's August. I mean, I'm excited because it's back, but in August, I got to start celebrating fall. Why don't they put them out? As much as I'd hate to say it, delay it till September because you know what's going to happen? Like always, Thanksgiving comes around and it's done. It's like, oh, Halloween came, October, too late. We're getting ready for Christmas. So now I got to go through Thanksgiving with no pumpkin donut. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to show you how to get your actual application files like the Intune Win and even the MSIs and EXEs back from Intune once they're already uploaded there. No, I mean, I just I started thinking about Thanksgiving without a pumpkin donut and the fact that we have to endure that and that nothing makes sense anymore. And this, the whole thing is messed up. Never mind. We'll just get to the Intune stuff. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. So I get this question all the time is when I have apps here in Intune, um, how do I get the files back? Uh, it's a pretty common question and it kind of makes sense, right? Whether you're new to an organization, you want to see what the folks have done there previously, or maybe you just don't remember what's uh, packaged in something and now you have to troubleshoot it. Uh, sure, in a perfect world, we'd save all that stuff, but we don't, uh, myself included. So now we have to get the files back. Uh, there's a lot of different methods out there. Uh, Rudy Ooms, uh, Microsoft MVP, he just uh, had a great post recently that detailed the process. And Oliver Kesselback used to have something. And I, I believe it's changed over the years. But I'm going to talk you through something that I still use today, even though it's a little bit older. But um, And I'm going to walk you through the process. So I'll put the article link below by this gentleman who is a Microsoft security consultant. And I won't even dare botch your name, but thank you for this. And it's somewhat older. It's from 2022. And this is something I've kept coming back to. And the instructions are here, but I'm going to walk you through it. Uh, essentially, there's an executable that we're going to get from the GitHub repo in the article. Um, and we're going to go ahead and download that. And what we need to do to test this is get that executable on a VM uh, or test machine. And what I typically do is I save it locally. So now I'll go to my uh, Hyper-V machine and what I typically do is I file share over to my main machine and go grab the executable. And in this case, that's what I've done and I've put the folder here. All right, so let's start by looking at what happens when an app is downloaded. We're going to go to C Program Files 86, uh, Microsoft Intune Management Extension, Content, and you're going to see Staging and Incoming. Uh, so typically staging is where Intune will place the files that you've packaged, it unpacks them, um, opens them up, installs them, and then gets rid of them. So if we were to, let's see if we can catch this in the act, right? So I'm going to company portal, notepad plus plus, and I'm going to hit install. And we're going to, we're going to like watch this guy here. So if I, yep. So you see a folder just showed up. If we try to open it, we need certain permissions. Let me put my admin account in rubixdev.com. Probably won't make it in time, especially if you type your password wrong. Yeah, so I don't have permission to that. Um, and actually, notice it's already gone. Uh, and that's because the system has permission to it. And what the system is doing is installing it and then deleting it. So it was installed successfully. That's good. But... You could see for a brief instance, that's where they are. So what this executable does that we've downloaded is when we run it, it blocks the system permission from being able to delete the file, right? Which will give us a chance to copy it or the app is gonna copy it. Now let's try another app. Let's try this global secure access client. I think it's an MSI, I don't remember. So how are we gonna use our extract Win32 app to get this? So first we're gonna run this as administrator. Uh, let's run that as administrator and I'm going to put in my admin account. So 
After pressing OK, system will be denied on the IME cache folder, which is what we're looking at. So we're going to hit OK. Now it tells us the permission has changed. Before pressing OK, start the app install and wait until the status shows fail. We can do that. So, because it's going to prevent it from installing. So we're going to hit install. Download is pending. So that's the installing. Now, what I've seen is this will change to failed. I don't know if it'll change to failed up here or if it's just going to show us that it failed on the side. Oh, no, it did. Uh, wait until the app shows fail to install. OK, fail to install. Now, notice if we go back to our. Yep. And there it is. Failed to install. If we go back to our cache location, uh, Microsoft into management extension content staging the folder didn't move but we're not going to touch it yet we're going to hit okay and what that's going to do is say restoring permissions we're going to hit okay again and the app is showing us where it copied all that so it, it zipped it and it copied it to c install intune and the app quit and if you're not sure that app quit is coming from the app so if we wanted to just check let's see e4465 we go to Intune and we look for the global secure client. Look at the GUID up here, E4465. So that is that application. Okay, perfect. So now what we can do is we can extract all. Great. And there it is, global secure access client.exe. So that's the actual executable that we originally packaged. And this will show you whatever has been bundled in there. Now, if we want to try this with something with, you know, more files in it, uh, for example, I have my migration script, right, which we know has a million uh, PowerShells and XMLs inside of it. So let's let's go back to that app. We'll run it as administrator. We hit OK. And now we're going to go ahead and run the install. And let's try something that maybe has some install scripts in it. Let's do uh, Thunderbird. So you're able to try a few at once, right? So I tried, uh, domain to cloud and Thunderbird and they both failed. Great. So we're going to hit okay. We'll let the, uh, permission resume restoring permissions. And now we should have two apps and we do. Okay. So let's take a look here. So let me delete the old zip. So we don't need that. Let's start with the uh, migration one. We'll extract that. Take a look inside and look, those are all my device migration uh, package files in there, um, which is very, very nice. And let's take a look at what was in. So we'll delete the zip and let's take a look at what was inside uh, the Thunderbird one. Let's take a look. This was one that was packed with uh, PS app deploy toolkit. So we got the files in there. This is the whole structure. Uh, we could see my deploy script, any support files and uh, the app deploy uh, toolkit itself. So yeah, really great that I can get all these uh, back. Again, there's several ways to do this, but for me, this seems to be the most consistent and straightforward. All I have to do is have an enrolled machine and uh, you're just gonna have to make the apps available uh, in the company portal to just grab them and, you know, halt the process like that. You know, and I get the question a lot about, you know, how do we do this? And I think, you know, it's definitely something we should try to prevent, right? We don't want to have to go get our apps like this. We want to get in the habit of uh, making some kind of catalog of the apps that we're packaging. Or if you're using, you know, I'm a big fan of like RoboPack, uh, that stores everything for you, both the dot Intune win and the, the binaries. So um, we definitely want to have some way of storing it proactively. But when you're in a pinch and you need it back, at least you have the method here. I'll put the links below. Let me know what you think, what method you use, and we'll be seeing you.